Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, welcome to this episode, Money and Chill, on the Australian Finance Podcast. Yes, November edition, and it's wonderful to be back, Owen. It is. We've got Mini Pizza in the studio. Mini, how are you going? Good. How yep. are you? Good. You're back. Yep. Where'd you go? I went to Europe. I did a little Paris, Milan, Lake Como, and Barcelona trip. Yuck. Sounds exotic. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> it was pretty terrible. Um, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> and so you're getting up at 5 a.m. because you're jet lagged and you think it's dinner time. Yeah. It's not so much like I wake up because like I'm awake. I wake up because I'm starving. Right. And I'm like, okay, it's time for a schnitzel. Because you um, ate three croissants for breakfast in your Yes. <laughs> Really? Did yeah. you really? Well, like they're ch- so cheap. Money saving tip in Paris. <laughs> Just go to Europe for one euro <laughs> croissant. That's yeah. money saving tip. It was for the so day. good, and they're so good. Like you'd go to Loon, and they're pretty good croissants, pretty pricey. But in Paris, better quality for one euro. And so it's you reckon the best? You reckon they're better than the Loon croissants? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, they wow. just melt in your Loon's mouth. Not listening to this. So. <laughs> you can literally have like ten of them and keep going. Right. <laughs> they're the best. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, what was your favorite place in Europe? That's a classic question. Uh, probably Lake Como. It was so nice. Like, you know, George Clooney lives there. Did you say um, hello? Or? Yeah, I just waved through his window. Yeah. It was he great. probably waved to you. You probably said yeah. no thanks. Yeah, he said thanks for visiting, Monique. Uh, <laughs> With his Voluto coffee. Um, <laughs> Nespresso, if you didn't get that. Yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just so relaxing because we did like all the cities, Paris, Milan, Barcelona, doing that late coma in the middle. It was so relaxing and it's just so picturesque. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. So beautiful. Last time you gave us on Money and Chill, you gave us your mindset mm-hmm. shift, which was don't see the layover or the stopover as like a huge issue if you're going to save a lot on flights. Yeah. And we asked, oh, yeah. we said, does that just mean you're going to spend heaps of money in the airport <laughs> and then you're not going to save any money? So, how'd so that go? So, what I didn't realise, I went to Singapore back in 2017. Yep. Yeah. So, I already had money left over on my travel card. So, oh, I had wow. like 100 Singapore dollars on them. So, it was like free money because it's been so long. I didn't even know it existed anymore. (laughs) So, did you see the butterflies? Saw the butterflies um, because, yeah, everything is free to go in the airport. So, saw the butterflies. What else did we see? It's been so long now. Um, Didn't you you say there was like a theme park or like a roller coaster or something in there? So, I wanted to go to that, but I think it was like slightly outside of like the customs area. So, we couldn't go. Uh, We could have, but like I just couldn't be bothered going through that whole process. But um, yeah, they have like all these cafes there. So you didn't end up spending all the money? I think I have ten dollars left. <laughs> oh, okay. But <laughs> because you didn't... then we just ended up like having coffees and food and yeah. um I bought a notebook, like just little things <laughs> here and there to like kill yeah. the time along the way. <laughs> so you didn't end up spending like five hundred dollars that you saved on the flight? No, definitely not. Definitely not. And if I didn't have that a hundred dollar free money, um probably wouldn't have really spent that much anyway. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of free things to do in the airport, which is really cool. So there you go, lay over yeah, in ten hours. Definitely did, yeah. And it's just like nice to walk through the airport. It's a cool airport, so yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. You can um, definitely do a lot more. You can definitely do some damage, but yeah, we held back a bit. You, are you happy to say how much you spent on your Europe trip? Yeah, I think. Well, I didn't really have a budget to begin with, so I don't know the exact Smart. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this trip, I was like, so. Previous trips, I've always been, like, super tight, like, living on muesli bars, not really experiencing yeah. the food. And this time I was like, nah, I'm just going to go nuts. So, I didn't really have a budget. But I think, like, with flats included and accommodation, it was around five or six K. So, not that much in the scheme of things. So, this is three weeks. When I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. That is so cheap. <laughs> you had someone to share accommodation. Well, yeah. So, with. all the accommodation, of accommodation was split in half. So, take that into account. So, it's probably like 12 grand for two of you. Yeah, yeah. Three weeks. That's nothing. Yeah. Like, 
obviously it's real money, like it's not nothing. But yep. <laughs> when I think of Europe, I'm thinking like a lot more expensive for some reason. Yeah, and you got pretty cheap flights. Yeah, I got cheap flights. Again, everything's split into two, like meals and everything. Um, transport, like you said, that was split into two. So, yeah, I think the fact that it, it, most things were split into two really cuts the cost. Did, is, did this include the money that you said? Remember you said a couple months ago that you were prepaying for some things like tickets to events and that sort of stuff, or is that separate money? No, nah, that's including, yeah. I'm just flabbergasted over yeah. here. Never mind. I know, I'll do the actual side. numbers and let you know, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have gone over six. And you, this was you like going all out. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I mean, like I, could, I, I only know. bought like six items Can of clothing, I just look at so each other that's like, me going all out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't been overseas for seven years, and so I was calculating for the month in January I yeah. might need, including flights, $10,000. I guess it depends where you go, because I did America a few years back, and I did spend ten k. Like, that was huge. Yeah. Well, I am planning to go to London. Yeah. So, so. that's like three times <laughs> the expenses. What the heck? There. <laughs> Why am I? Okay. Well, I'm doing I'll something wrong. Back. I'm doing something <laughs> wrong because I'm budgeting like a lot more money. What am I doing? Well, I'm not staying in hostels. I'm staying in hostels. Yeah, That's see, I'm not going to be staying in a hostel. Yeah. So if you wanted to stay in hotels, like most of them in London, at least five hundred dollars a night. Yeah, that's insane. So where did you, you stay? Have to- did you? Do I it? stayed in like Airbnbs mostly. So it was like. I Were tried not nice to go. Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the first one was great. There was lots of mold involved. But anyway, oh, um, that was like so yummy. disappointing. But we did spend more than like 100 and 150 a night. But again, that split into two. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. We kind of did it. I got to check myself. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to talk about then, Kate? You're going to give us an update on what's happening because my brokerage account is looking a bit better at the moment than it was a few months ago. Okay. So the only finance part of the finance show, no, seriously. uh, So the two things that people are asking about, stocks are up 11% in six weeks at the time of recording. So that's it's even more if you look at the United States. So US stocks, really good. Aussie stocks, still really good. Uh, 11% in six weeks is a lot of money to make on a portfolio. Uh, so the first reason that that went up is that uh, the stock market is reacting to what's happening in the future, not what's reacting like what's happening today. So when you think about stock prices today, what you're actually getting is the future. So if you buy Telstra shares today, you're getting Telstra's future dividends. So when the future looks brighter, um, your stocks go up. That's basically the way it works. And so for a lot of investors, the future is looking a lot brighter just even than it was a couple of months ago. Like everyone was talking about recessions and stuff a couple of months ago, which now we know is probably going to happen in the United States. It's almost certain. And then here in Australia, we'll probably avoid it, all things being equal. Uh, the UK is obviously a basket case. But we know that now. So all of the things that happen from here, what the reason why the stock market tends to go up before everything else bad happens is because the stock market already reflects bad news so that anything that's good makes it go up much quicker than it goes down, typically. So like the first thing that's good is like lower inflation. Oh, wow, it looks like inflation is finally coming down, up. Um, oh, look, interest rates might not go up as quickly, up. Um, the property market might not be as bad as people think, up. Uh, so that's why we've seen st- stocks rally. So if you own ETFs, uh, Australian ETFs, international ETFs, that's why um, they're going up. Now, that's really good because it means that um, for investors, now could be a good time to start thinking about what are those companies or ETFs that I've wanted to buy that I haven't been buying. Um, the thing that we probably haven't seen yet, which is ex- is pain in the property market. And what I mean by that is, I, I, I know you went through this, Kate, quickly before we recorded. If you, buy, if you ever buy a house, you should never, ever plan to own that for less than, say, five years, it's five, seven, ten years. You should never, anyone that tries to convince you to buy and sell, um, it just shouldn't happen because of what we're about, like seeing in Australia uh, right now. Um, if you bought in a good location, you bought a decent house that could be sold to a middle-income family, that means you've bought pretty well, so you don't need to worry. Uh, and if you can afford the mortgage repayments, no need to worry. So there's basically three things there. When you buy a property, you only aim to hold it for a long period of time. Uh, it's not like shares where you can buy and sell quickly. Um, if you buy well, the rest kind of takes care of itself, provided you don't get in too much debt. So if you think about those things, the only time you see something scary in the news about property going forward, A, expect that it's, we already knew this, like it was going to be hard. 
B, you're in a good location. You've bought the right property for you. Don't worry about it. Um, now, sure, we might see some pain in the property market, but for most people like myself, I think for you too as well, we're okay. We've got jobs. We've got a mortgage we can afford. So that's great. For some people, that's not the case, hmm. uh, which is really unfortunate. But anyone listening to this, um, it's important that you have these three things ticked off. You aim for the long term. You can afford the repayments and you make sure that you buy well. Yeah, Don't rush into it. It's interesting. My variable has now caught up with my fixed rate yep. over the last six months since I purchased the property where it was quite, um, different. quite different at the time. Yeah. So that's because... So you know how we come out every month and we say the RBA, like that's like the, the organization that sets the interest rate for Australia. That's to try and cool down the economy. You should always aim to be 2% above that. So what I mean is like if the RBA rate is 2.8%, well, you want to be 4.8%. So that's like the 2% buffer is basically the bank's profit. And so you're aiming for that. That's as a rule of thumb. So if you're aiming for that in your variable. Yeah, in your variable. Now, if you're fixed, then you've got whatever you've got fixed. Mm-hmm. But say, for example, say, for example, you the RBA rate's 2.85%, which it is. And let's say that you're paying 6% on your variable. You're paying too much because you're more than 2% above it. You want to be like 2% above whatever you see on the RBA website. Um, the way they get you with that is they, for people you know that have rolled off fixed contracts like myself, uh, they push that up higher than for new customers. And that's that loyalty tax kicking in. So you can actually refinance and get it down. Have you felt the sting since you rolled off a fixed? Oh, yeah. We're paying more than 1000 bucks a month extra. Yeah. So where does that money come from? That's it. Well, you just have to less money for investing. Yeah, that's less money for investing. It's less money for spending. Um, you know, it's I, I run a pretty lean budget. Uh, it might not seem like that from all the coffees that I buy, <laughs> but I actually, I run a very lean budget. Like I don't spend on a lot of. I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, my Xbox is probably one of my most exotic things, and um, <laughs> it's still the like the OG. Like, um, so you know for. This is a time when you want to be frugal and you want to be cutting back on the unessential items. So the things that you don't need every day and you want to make sure you still got that buffer. There will be a lot of families in Australia that have bought in the last few years that will feel the pain. So we just want to make sure <laughs> we just want to make sure that you know you are being frugal now, you're keeping that emergency fund, avoid going into debt. Um, and I think for most parts of Australia, I don't I'm not an expert on this. This is me rambling, but I think for most parts of Australia, people who bought property will be okay. Um, you'll be okay, and that's probably the key thing to keep in mind: is you will be okay. Because what happens is, if things get really bad, then interest rates come down, and all of a sudden the repayments are better. So the reverse happens; it can be positive. So, um, but if you've got like 500 properties, then that's probably where it's a bit. We're probably not the podcast for you. We're not the pro- you can go, the, go across the street to the other podcast where they advocate for lots of debt. Um, so, yeah, I think for most of us, it's okay. It's a good news story. Stocks are looking up. Um, unemployment's really low. Australia's doing incredibly well. Just expect a little bit more pain in property. Um, I, to be honest with you both, for me, it's more a case of, well, if property falls, I'd look to refinance and maybe buy another property, to be honest. Um, not to get ahead of myself, I'd still have to do a bit of saving for that, but that's probably what I'd be looking to do, because like, I'm not I'm not the type of person that buys when prices are up. I'm the type of, type of person that buys when prices are down. So that's my economic update. And we should do some funny music at the end of that. But we don't have any. Um, I put you guys both on the spot today to come up with one money tip. Um, we've both been really busy planning holidays, going on holidays, <laughs> being jet lagged. Um, I don't know what I've been doing, but some other stuff. So, um, who wants to go first? I'm happy to go. Okay, Kate. So, yeah. the other day, I was oh. trying to get access to my international COVID vaccine certificate, which is different to your normal COVID vaccine certificate that we were all showing when we went to cafes and things last year. Right, okay. And to do that, you need to go into your Medicare account. Now, I'd never linked my Medicare account with my MyGov account, and Hmm. there's a whole set of things you have to fill in when you want to link a new service provider to your MyGov account. Now, it didn't work. 
because it turned out my Medicare card expired about eight months ago. Oh, nice. Which uh, I hadn't realised and no one had really flagged it. They must not have cared when I went and got my flu shot. So then I had to call the hotline. So I'm thinking this is going to be a bad experience. I called at 8 a.m. straight through to someone to help me and she was very helpful. Turned out my address was many houses old. Like I was really out of date on my Medicare card. I had a expire a bank account that was no longer valid. And so I got everything hooked up, Medicare linked up, and turned out I had $25 sitting there from 2019. And the lady on the phone said, uh, most people that she speaks to and helps on the phone do have money sitting around from rebates um, just mm. in their Medicare account because they've never put bank account details or they've got an expired bank account or for some reason the money didn't go through. So $25 from 2019 just sitting there uh, waiting for me. So for some people... Like I haven't been to many doctors or things in the last few years, but for some people that could be quite a lot more money just sitting there in their Medicare account. So Mm. she showed me how to use the app. So there's the Medicare Express app. Now I've got a virtual Medicare card. She got me to do everything while we're on the phone call. Uh, And so the $25 is heading my way to my newly updated bank account. But um, I just thought there's a lot of unclaimed money sitting around in various places in Australia, whether it's dividends that you didn't have your bank account in the share registry, Medicare, all sorts of things. So moral (laughs) of the story, keep your details up to date. So I felt kind of bad that I had not really updated this for four years but uh, and find that lost money sitting around. I like it. That's really cool. A lot of people probably have that. I'm thinking I have it. I should have updated my Medicare details years ago. Yeah. Uh, But it just seemed all too hard. But it turned out a 15-minute phone call at 8 a.m., on, in the morning, sorted it all out. So that was something that I'd built up in my head and it really wasn't that hard. Did you choose 8am for a reason? Is that when they opened or like was there, was you, were you I like, just... I'll beat the morning traffic and do it at 8am? <laughs> yeah, well, this is just when I thought of it and I was just like, I'll do it before work. Just get it sorted. Uh, okay. yeah, it might take an hour. I assumed I'd have to be on a, a phone queue for a I while. put you on hold. But I didn't. No, nope, straight through to the operator. So cool. it was great. Maybe they knew you were calling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Campbell. Wow. Well, I need oh, to cool. get onto this. <laughs> yeah. Don't let this one go through. Well, luckily, I booked <laughs> my last flu shot via the Hot Doc app. So when she asked security questions and I had to rattle off where the last medical center I'd visited and what date, because I had gotten a few of my other security questions wrong, I was able to rattle off the exact time and date and place. Huh. So that helped. What's Hot nice. Doc? Oh, it's an app that some of the medical centres use that you can book um, your flu shots, your COVID shots, medical appointments, all through. I use it just for normal doctor appointments now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. A Shout lot out of medical to hot dog. practices uh, use it. So it's super easy. Okay, cool. You guys paid by hot dog. Let me just. Check <laughs> <in>. <laughs> I don't know. It was just the local medical centre, medical centre where I got my COVID shots. Used it, so that's just been really easy to use ever since. Cool, uh, Kate. I mean. Monique, you're next. Did you did you want to go next? Yeah, or, I'll go next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Well, like I've been spending a lot more money recently because we'll be travelling. Mm-hmm. Not um, as much as we thought. Well, not as much as yes. we thought. Yeah, so I feel great now. <laughs> I feel like I've actually saved. Um, <laughs> but so my few tips are travel-related shock. Um, mm-hmm. So one thing that I kind of learnt while I was over there, I did like mainly, mainly the cities, so public transport's great. Um, instead of like taking Ubers and spending 30 euro here and there on Ubers, um, we kind of figured out that most of the public transport had like multi-day passes. Huh. Um, so for example, in, well, like Como, they use all the ferries to obviously get to each side of the lake. Mm-hmm. Um, so something I didn't know when I was there was that you can get like a, I think it was like a two day or whatever day pass to um, go to each of the lake for say like I think it was 25 euros or something rather than like I mean I don't think you would take an uber to the other side of the lake because it just doesn't make sense you have to go all the way around mm-hmm. and take three times the amount of time but um yeah it was just really interesting to see like a really good system that they had and it really wasn't that expensive cool. um but even like places like Barcelona they have really good trains and I checked out their system and you could get like a multi-day pass to like use their buses, like hop on, hop off buses. And that also included to go to the airport return. Um, So like instead of using an Uber to go to the airport, you could just get this one pass for your like sightseeing and also the airport. So it kind of had everything in one. And I think that was about 25-ish as well, 25 euros. Um, So then, yeah, other than that, you'd have to get an Uber, which was around 40 euro or a taxi, which was 40 euro. 
to just go to the airport. So it was like little saving bits here and there while mm. we were there. Um, but yeah, also another thing that I really enjoyed were being in the places on a Sunday, which meant the markets were open. Yeah, of course. So I got a cashmere, lovely cashmere cardigan, 100% <laughs> cashmere <laughs> for 40 euros. Oh, I was wow. so happy. And then, like, I'd go around the other stores, see the cashmere jumpers and everything, and they'd be, like, 200 euros. And I'm like, I totally won with this. So that was only because this market was on the f- last Sunday of every month and we just happened to be there at the right time. So you didn't know it was going to be there? No. So this was huh. in Milan, a place called Navili, I think it was called. Uh, excuse my pronunciation. Um, so it kind of looks like you're in Venice. There's, like, a whole... What do you call those things? A lake? Canal. Canal. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Um, And then on each side of the canal, they had these market stalls. And we just went there because I'm like, oh, it looks pretty. They might have a gondola there. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) And then we get there. There's this massive market. And yeah, like so many cool things, so many cheap, cool things. Yeah. So no romantic gondola ride, but a cashmere sweater. No, but a cashmere (laughs) sweater, which I was so happy about. I went back and got my sister one as well. (laughs) Yeah. What about food? Like, what did things cost over there? You said a euro croissant. Croissants were- Just doing some research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So stock up on your croissants. Um, But other than that, food was kind of average um, because I said earlier, like I usually would go traveling and only eat muesli bars because I was on a tight budget. This time I made sure like I went to the nicer restaurants, um, didn't really like skimp out on food that much. So for like a meal, you're looking at 10 to 15 euro, which Mm -hmm. isn't that bad if you've already exchanged your money into euros. Just for a main, main course? Yeah, just for a main. What about like a filled baguette or something? Like for those you get on like... (laughs) So those range, I'll tell you the range, depending on where you are, it could be like three to seven euros. If you're in like the Louvre, I remember it being seven euros. Mm-hmm. So that's in the touristy section. Is this yeah. like a big thing yeah. or is this like, like a, small a long roll? Room? Yeah, right. With like ham and cheese. And well, stuff. if we go down here on Flinders Lane in Melbourne, it'd be like 15, 20 Well, yeah, bucks. exactly. So it's like in the scheme of things, it's actually not that much. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hmm. Any other bread-related questions from the UK? <laughs> what about a baguette? <laughs> a baguette? So, like, just a plain yes. baguette? That was, like, not even a euro. It Amazing. was, like, sets. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's good. I ate so much food. Oh, and the sangria in Barcelona. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Six euros for, like, a giant, like, chalice. It was great. <laughs> and that got you wow. through the night? Yes. I've been dreaming about it. I'm like, I just want more sangria. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, and you also got this outfit that you got on for- Yes, I went thrift shopping in Milan. Um, so you I, actually went to the yeah, like, so the thrift stores, like yeah. $2 stores. Another whatever. thing that I realised when I was there, it was not sale time, unfortunately. Um, so everything was not on sale, clothing-wise and hmm. shoe-wise. So, But then I'm like, Italy usually has like, I'm generalising, better quality clothing, yep. the way it's made and stuff. Um, so I was like, surely if I go like to the thrift stores, mm. there'd be some, like I'd score something really cool. Um, so yeah, I scored this dress that I'm wearing now. It's like from the seventies or something, but yeah, it's made in Italy. It looks Christmassy. So it's fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then other than that, the, the, like the other shopping or clothing item that I really liked was like the Spanish shoes. Um, because if you like buy Spanish made shoes here in Australia, they're like five hundred dollars. So <laughs> I found this really nice pair that I loved. The one hundred and forty five euros, and I was like, oh, it still like converts to like two hundred and thirty ish dollars. Like I don't spend that much money on shoes usually. But then I was like, but I'm only here once. They're really well made. If I'm to get them in Australia, they're going to be five hundred dollars. Let's just do it. So uh, I got them too. <laughs> oh, so cool. That's so great. I would yeah. never have thought to go to a Secondhand shop and yeah, I just thought of it when I was there. I'm like, no, this is actually a smart idea. I'm going to do it. (laughs) Yeah, why not? We we do it here. So cool. Takes off shopping to the next level. Yeah, yeah, love it. Um, All right, I'll be quick with mine because it's easily the most boring of the three of us. (laughs) Which is just that uh, interest rates have gone up, which we've talked about, but a lot of accounts still don't pay that interest. So I'm talking about like savings accounts that never adjusted up. I'm talking about brokers that still don't pay interest because they, when interest rates fell, they used to offer interest, but now they've just never spoken about it again. Yeah. Cash so, management accounts that are linked to brokers, linked robo to broker. advisors, all sorts of things yeah. often don't pay any interest at all. So I said before that basically interest rates have gone from zero to 3% and 
Um, and if you have your money in one of their bank accounts, they're the ones that are earning that 3%. So, there's a 100% profit for them. That's often part of the company's business model, holding <laughs> yeah, that it. cash and making the interest and not paying it to you. Yeah. So, that's why a lot of these brokers are making fat profits, even if the stock market's down. So, I would say take your money out of there, put it in a savings account. Um, and even if you have a lot of cash and you like that, um, maybe even think about TDs, like term deposits. And it, like maybe this will be my tip next month, but it might even be time to start thinking about locking in term deposits if you are uh, that way inclined. Obviously, there are other ways you can get your frills, which we'll talk about on different shows coming up. But yeah, it may even be time to start thinking about that because if you think about locking in with your mortgage interest rates when they're low, that's a good thing like you did, Kate. But then when interest rates go up, you also want to lock in term deposits, right? So you want to play both ways. Yeah. So keep that in mind. But just at the in the meantime, Immediately right now, think, where is my most cash and am I getting the right interest rate for that? We've done a lot of episodes recently on that. Go and check it out. Like my broker ain't paying me nothing. So I am moving. Yeah. I only move money into my cash management account when I'm ready to buy something. Yep. Like it. Um, And so just as general housekeeping news, things that we've got behind the scenes, obviously Money and Chill is our very relaxed episode for the month, which is great to have Monique back for Money and Chill. Um, It is we are hosting event turns out it's about this time next month Uh, and you know next month December we uh, Friday night we're having everyone in town we're going to be doing an an in-person event 250 people it's going to be heaps of like show bags and things for people to take away it's going to be drinks canapes and all of the people that you know from whether it's social media or podcasts are going to be there so it's going to be a heap of fun and if you can't make it to Melbourne I actually got a message before on uh, our Insta DMs or my Insta DM saying from a farmer saying that they're thrilled that we're doing an event and we've got a live stream. So if you're not in Melbourne, you can't make it, but come on, get down here. Um, If you can't make it, there's going to be a live stream option. And basically the way it's going to work is it'll start at 6 p.m. on a Friday night. So it's like one of those watch parties with friends. Uh, Check it out. It'll be on the Rask uh, YouTube channel. And from there, you will get the full live stream like we have in person. So you'll get some bad jokes probably from me. You'll get one of Kate's interviews, which will be fantastic. But what happens is when we have a break for 45 minutes, you will also get some of the best ideas. So there'll be like people pitching stocks. There will be um, some people like guessing what next year's big thematic ETF will be. Uh, There's going to be heaps of cool tips and tricks in there in the break. So what I wouldn't be surprised if everyone who's attending goes back and watches it anyway, because the live stream will be probably more valuable than in person. But hey, if you're in Melbourne, come down to the event. Uh, some of the names that I can mention, I think I can mention names. I think yeah. it's fair. So we'll have uh, the guys from Equity Mates will be interviewing Lee Matthews, who's an AFL legend, live on stage. Um, I'm hoping Kate will be interviewing uh, Victoria Devine, the founder of She's and the Money. Uh, we'll have a panel, hopefully with. Uh, Matt from Aussie Firebug. We'll have uh, Investor Queenie, Tash Invests, uh, Jess from She's in the Money as well. Uh, I'll be interviewing a, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Sam Hubert, who is the co-founder of ProMedicus, probably Australia's best performing tech company over the past 15 years. So he's coming to the event um, and it'll be heaps of fun. I don't think he's ever done anything like that. So then during the break, we'll have um, presentations from the likes of Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool, um, the guys at Global X, uh, Danielle Ecuye, so many people presenting at the event. It's going to be heaps of fun. Uh, thanks to our sponsors and everyone that's come on board for that. Uh, there'll be more information about them and what they're doing for the event as well in coming days. So jump on there. It's the RAS Media website. If you just Google RASC event, it will come up. It's $39 a ticket, super cheap. That includes canapes and drinks. Have I missed anything? The date. The date. I think it's December 9th, if I'm not mistaken. So, December 9th, which is a Friday night, the doors open at 5 p.m. for the event to start at 6 p.m. So, if you are in Melbourne CBD, this is where it is located. We're not giving the exact location out uh, unless you have a ticket, which is very simple to get. You just buy one um, because- We'd, you know, <laughs> it would be a lot of people rocking up to a location, uh, but you can just live stream it if you can't make it to the actual venue. But it's within walking distance of all the tram, uh, trams, trains, um, you know, Ubers, car parks, all that sort of stuff in Melbourne CBD. So check it out. It's going to be heaps of fun. I'm treating it like our- Christmas party. Christmas party. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so 
it, and some all-star uh, speakers and presenters on the night. So come on down. It'll be a bit of fun. Uh, Evan Lucas will be there, Mind Over Money, if you liked his book. It's going to be Glenn James. I haven't even mentioned Glenn James from My Millennial Money. We'll be doing the icebreaker at the start of the show. So, so many like awesome people uh, in one room. I'm sure I've missed so many people, but uh, it's going to be heaps of fun. So get on down. Well, ladies, it's great to have you back for Money and Chill. We've got a special one that remains for the end of the year, which will be the Christmas edition. Hopefully, we can get all dressed up <laughs> and it'll be a bit of fun. Uh, and yeah, if you have any uh, questions or you want to reach out to us, be sure to uh, use the the thing that says ask a question on the RASC website so you can send us a, a question. Um, and you can also reach out to us uh, via the contact pages on the RASC websites. But if you just Google RASC event, you'll find all the information there. You can buy two tickets to, per person, like per order, just because we're trying to stop people buying so many tickets that not everyone gets one. So check it out. It'll be live streamed. It's going to be heaps of fun. And that's it for Money and Chill. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, ladies. I really appreciate it. Monique, welcome back. And thank, thank you. you. It's great to be back. And Kate Campbell, as always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone.